just arrived at the water's edge, the canal to be precise. My rod's made up, that's the Velcro band, and I'm fishing with a float, so you can still make your rod up with a float. What I do when I take it down is I make sure there's just enough line there to leave a, a few inches or so, and then I bring it down, tuck it around the Velcro band, hook it onto one of the rings on the rod. So perfect, you can still be fishing pretty quickly. I've been to work today, been home, got a pond liner, so there's an upcoming blog about building an amphibian pond in your garden. Watch this space on that one. And I'm going to show a short video now, it's only 20 seconds, that I took today on the training pitch with the new Saints. It wasn't planned, I went out with my camera, the players were training, they were in groups doing different things, and we got that video. As you can see, it's player banter, which is always good. Good team spirit in the camp, especially after the defeat on Saturday. But if you work in football media, or any sort of media, relationship with the players or the people that you're working with is very, very important. In fact, I would say that's true of any job, because the better the relationship, the more productive the content will be. What is touch now, ref? Ready? Uh, we're working on Chris Marriott's touch. He needs it. You don't find me. <laughs> Come on, man. Better. Terrible. I think I've got a bite developing. It looks like a gudgeon as well. The float just moves slightly across the water. I'm waiting for it to move again and then dip. It's not going to dip, but it's moving, so I'm going to strike. And I was right, it was a gudgeon. I'll get the hook out that in a moment. Actually, I'll do that now. It's a lively one. You can tell fish by the bites that they give. If you're a novice angler, you think, how do you, how do you work that out? when you can say that that was a gudgeon, and it was a gudgeon. I guess that's experience, but I described the bite there. And this is the fish, I might, have to, I might have to use two hands on that one, but it's okay. I'm not gripping it firmly, by the way, just enough to hold it. Small gudgeon, small, but perfectly formed. Cast in, and immediately the same thing happened with the float didn't disappear either so that's quite unusual and I want to talk about the depth in a, a moment or two I need my glasses I think to get this hook out it's not deep it's only in the edge of the fish's mouth however I do need glasses so I'll get that out in a moment but it's a bigger fish this time and there is the maggot that did the business talking about the depth when you're float fishing one item of tackle that you definitely need is a plummet if you're not sure what a plummet is it's a small well depends on the size of the plummet of course but a relatively small piece of uh, lead or weight and you hook your line with the hook on through it and then into some cork at the bottom there are variations but that gives you an idea what it's like so you can drop it in and because it's heavy enough to go straight to the bottom. If your float is too short, it'll sink. If it's too long, it won't. And then you'll be able to lift up and feel the lead, feel the plummet, and you'll know how far you need to adjust. And then of course, one of the great things is, with a plummet, you arrive at a swim and you can cast around. So you get an idea of the depth, not just in that one place that you will be fishing eventually, but of the whole swim. Now in a canal, it's, it's not so varied as it would be in a lake or a river because they are man-made. They were dug by hand many, many years ago and there is more of a uniformity to them in terms of a boat channel, a near shelf, a far shelf. And so you have an idea of what you're fishing. But if you do what I'm doing and you keep your rod made up and then every session maybe you'll nip the line off 
tie a new hook, remember to then adjust the top two shot, the two either side of the float so that you keep the same depth. That's important. I've cast out again and a couple of gudgeon very early in the session. It is a, a short session anyway, about uh, an hour and three quarters this evening and the weather is quite good. So yesterday the session ended a little bit sooner than I would have hoped due to the overcast and grey conditions. Today I'm hoping to get a few more minutes angling in before I have to pack away. I'm catching small gudgeon, but then every now and then one of them is, uh, is bigger. This is, this is a, a slippery character. Very slippery. I'm going to have to hold it up like that, I think. It's a nice fish, especially from the canal. They don't grow particularly big. I think the perch and the chub get there first. This one survived and it's feeding well. It's got two or three maggots in its throat. That's a good sign, the fish are feeding. I'm ready to go shortly. <clears throat> um, I've just had a telephone call. I had this on speaker and multitasking. That's what it's all about. While I was talking to someone, I caught, first of all, I popped them into the landing net, a perch, followed by, this is the best fish so far. Ooh, ah, it's a lively one. A nice roach. So I'm certainly happy with the three species that I've had this evening. And as I say, ready to go home shortly because it's gone 6.30, it's still light. I can still maybe have one more cast, you know what it's like as an angler. However, apart from that, out fishing yourself, tight lines, and I'll see you soon. I'll be back out tomorrow as well.